cost of goods sold or COGS, is one of those accounting terms that might sound a bit dry at first. But trust me, it's absolutely crucial for anyone running a business, especially if you're selling physical products. Imagine you're a manufacturer of widgets. You've got to account for everything that goes into making those widgets, the raw materials, the labor, and all those overhead costs that sneak in there. COGS is the total of all those direct costs associated with producing and selling your goods. Understanding this concept can be a game changer for your business, so let's break it down together. At its core, COGS gives you insight into how much it costs to produce each unit of product you sell. It's a key metric that helps you understand your profitability. For instance, if you're selling a widget for $50, but it costs you $30 to make it, you've got a gross profit of $20 per widget. That's where COGS comes into play. It's not just about knowing your revenue, it's about knowing what it costs to generate that revenue. Now, let's talk about how to calculate COGS. The formula is pretty straightforward. Beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. So what does that mean? Your beginning inventory is the value of the inventory you have at the start of the accounting period. Purchases are any new inventory you've bought during that period, and ending inventory is what you have left at the end. To put this into perspective, let's say you start the month with $15,000 worth of widgets in your inventory. You purchase an additional $20,000 worth of materials to make more widgets. By the end of the month, you've got $10,000 worth of widgets left. Plugging those numbers into the formula gives you $15,000 plus $20,000 minus $10,000, which equals $25,000 for your COGS. But why is this number so important? Well, once you have your COGS, you can calculate your gross profit by subtracting COGS from your total sales revenue. If you sold those widgets for a total of $50,000, your gross profit would be $50,000 minus $25,000, which equals $25,000. This figure is crucial because it gives you insight into how well your core operations are performing before you start factoring in other operating expenses. Let's take it a step further. Understanding COGS can also help you analyze product margins. By calculating COGS for each product line, you can identify which products are your cash cows and which ones might be dragging you down. If a particular widget has a high COGS relative to its selling price, it might be time to rethink your pricing strategy or even consider discontinuing it altogether. And if you're budgeting or forecasting, knowing your COGS is vital. Accurate forecasts can help you plan for future expenses and adjust your pricing strategies accordingly. If you can predict your costs accurately, you can make more informed decisions about production levels and pricing, ensuring your business stays profitable. Now, let's clarify a common point of confusion. COGS versus Cost of Goods Produced, or COGP. They sound similar, but they refer to different things. COGS is all about the costs associated with the goods that have actually been sold during a specific period. In contrast, COGP looks at the total cost of all products manufactured during that period, regardless of whether they were sold or not. This distinction is important because it can influence your financial reporting and decision-making. Let's dive into a detailed example to clarify things even further. We'll stick with our widget manufacturer, ABC Corp. They've incurred $10,000 in direct materials costs, $5,000 in direct labor, and $2,000 in manufacturing overhead for the month. To find the total manufacturing cost, you add those together. $10,000 plus $5,000 plus $2,000, which equals $17,000. Now, let's calculate the cost of goods manufactured, or COGM. You take that total manufacturing cost of $17,000, add the beginning inventory of $15,000, and subtract the ending inventory of $10,000. So, $17,000 plus $15,000 minus $10,000 gives you $22,000 for COGM. Next, we can find the COGS. Using our earlier formula, we take the beginning inventory of $15,000, add the purchases of $20,000, and subtract the ending inventory of $10,000. That gives us a COGS of $25,000. 
Now, if ABC Corp. has sales revenue of $50,000, we can calculate the gross profit. Just subtract the COGS from the sales revenue. $50,000 minus $25,000 equals $25,000 in gross profit. It's a clear picture of how much money the company is making from its core operations before any other expenses come into play. But here's the kicker. Should COGS be viewed at different hierarchy levels? Absolutely. Analyzing COGS at various levels can provide deeper insights into your business. For example, if you sell multiple products, breaking down the COGS for each product can help you figure out which ones are really driving your profits and which ones might need a rethink. If you operate in different regions or business units, analyzing COGS at that level can reveal trends and areas for improvement. You might find that one region has a much higher COGS than another, prompting a closer look at operational efficiencies. And let's not forget about decision-making and manufacturing. COGS is a vital tool here as well. It helps with product pricing strategies, ensuring that your prices cover production costs while remaining competitive. It also aids in optimizing your product mix. If you discover that some products have a high cogius, you might want to focus on promoting the more profitable items instead. So, how can cost accountants ensure that COGS is accurate and reliable? First off, maintaining accurate and up-to-date inventory records is essential. You need to know exactly what you have on hand, what you've purchased, and what's left at the end of the period. Next. Costs must be assigned to the correct products. This means tracking direct materials, labor, and overhead accurately. It's also important to verify the accuracy of direct costs, which might involve spot-checking invoices or conducting audits. Allocating overhead costs can be tricky, but developing a consistent methodology is key. Finally, reconciling COGS with financial statements ensures everything aligns and is accurately reflected on your income statement. In summary, understanding cost of goods sold is crucial for any business that sells physical products. It's not just a number on a financial statement. It's a window into your business's operational efficiency and profitability. By breaking it down, ee taking, analyzing it at different levels, and ensuring its accuracy, you can make informed decisions that help your business thrive. So, whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or just starting, keep COGS in mind as you navigate the complexities of running a successful business. It could very well be the key to your financial success.